Jim, Jim, if you could start over on your intro about how I was the greatest poker player in the world and that, that thing, you, you, were, you were rolling right before we came in and then we found out it was plugged. So I'll just let oh, you roll with that again. Yeah, I should. Let me get back. Let me get back on bended knee to Rob Gardner over here. I'm so excited. How did you know I sung practice? that song at karaoke? Who told you about oh, that? You didn't we, see the video, did you? We should totally do karaoke in June. Oh, we're done. down there at the same it, time. It, well, well, we're going to be there at the same time. And that that's you don't it even have to like ask. It. Yeah, I've been wondering who's going to be involved in the next like karaoke adventure. I, I got to warn you, though, I'm terrible at karaoke because the key to karaoke Perfect. is no, 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 no. The key to karaoke is being really, really, really good or really, really, really bad. Mm. And I am like, I'm not polarized. I'm right in yep. the middle. So yep. I'm not the best karaoke person. But you know what? I, I also karaoke from the condensed portion of my range. And that doesn't mean <laughs> that doesn't mean that we can't have fun out there. You know, we yeah. can just enjoy the time. All right, yeah. well, well, folks, welcome to the uh, Rec Poker Marek Madness <laughs> Final Four broadcast. Um, I'm happy that we've got Rob Gardner here in the booth. We are overcoming, just listen, every once in a while, audio cues are hard. Audio cues are hard. It's hard to hit. We're doing this live. You know, I'm trying my best. Taylor Moss is trying his best. Uh, and every once in a while, we just got to uh, keep it keep it fresh with you and let you know that this is the real authentic experience that you're having here at Red Poker. I think that's, that's really what it's all about. So um, first of all, I want to shout out uh, BGM and 96 in the chat for his awesome uh, hype graphics. And we got a bunch of people here in the chat. I see uh, a, a bunch of friendly faces, some coming over from uh, you, Rob. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what you've been getting up to recently, and then we'll uh, share some more details about Marek Madness, what we're going to encounter tonight. Yeah, so I'm a part of a project called 100K Studios, and we've got some cool similar goals to what you guys are doing. We're trying to um, make a more robust offering for casual and recreational players. Um, we kind of see things as, you know, the game is really, really focused on the poker pros, education, focus on the poker pros, entertainment, focus on the poker pros, poker news, focus on the poker pros. And that's literally 1% of our industry. We wouldn't have an industry without casual recreational players. So, um, we could have five of you and five of me and probably still not have enough out there for the casual rec crowd. So we're just out there trying to create some really great uh, educational material um, that's really geared towards people that have families and jobs and can't study GTO 60 hours a week, right? Or run solvers. Um, we break down things into 15, 20 minute lessons. We have run poker leagues. Um, we're in the process of going to send two people to the World Series this summer. Uh, so that's going to be really, really exciting through our poker leagues. We even have these cool rings we give out because you know what? Um, it's expensive to play for circuit rings. So we have these cool little uh, like branded rings. I don't know how easy it is to see on there, but we've got these really nice rings we send out as prizes. Nice. People, so we give people a chance to kind of have the entire poker experience, but condensed to you know a casual recreational player's budget. So... Um, and of course we love rec poker. We support all the things you guys do. We're, we're super happy that you guys are here because, um, we need it. We need it. I mean, you don't have to spend 30 seconds on Twitter seeing all the drama and the obnoxiousness to know that mm. having some good positive communities that are, that are doing good things in poker is just critically important to our health and our future. I love it, man. You couldn't, couldn't have said it better myself. Um, the recreational game of poker is not only not only is it crucial to the game as a whole, but it's the most fun kind of poker. Like if you want to have fun playing poker, for God's sake, uh, do it as a hobby. Do it for fun. Don't yeah. don't you know try and take it pro and have this something that you gotta like you know treat like a business and be disciplined about and like you know be responsible. God knows you want you don't want uh, lady luck uh, putting your mortgage payment on the line if you can just come and enjoy it and have fun. Yeah. I mean. That, Having fun with poker, God, it's, uh, it's what we're all about here. And I know that, that you feel the same. Um, so I'm excited for tonight. So uh, Marek Madness, if you don't know what is going on tonight, we started with uh, uh, 16 contestants in our heads up bracket. And every Thursday night in Marek, or uh, March, as some would call it, uh, we're doing these different rounds of, uh, of elimination rounds. So we're right here for the final four. Tonight, we're going to be looking at uh, Michael Babker versus Chris Jones in the first match, and then Keith Brandt versus Charles Allen in the second match. And uh, regular watchers of Rec Poker will know. Um, Michael Babker is a fantastic premium member who helps us out a lot with our uh, technical uh, requirements here as a community. So lots of love for Michael Babker here. 
And uh, his opponent, Chris555 Jones, is actually the uh, membership content director here at Rec Buffer, who creates all the training material and sets the curriculum and the themes of the month and helps with a lot of the production aspects here at Rec Poker. So it's hard to pick a horse here because both of these uh, uh, contestants are such wonderful people in big parts of Rec Poker community. That one's going to be followed up by Keith Monkey System Brandt. As I mentioned, Keith's a Rec and Crew member who runs one of our monthly study groups, uh, Monkey's Off-Table Tools, which is a fantastic way to look at tools like Range Trainer Pro and uh, Advanced Poker Training and some other great resources like that to get the most out of them when you're off the felt. Versus Charles B. Chip Allen, as I say, um, a premium member who's really active in the uh, Tuesday night online play and hangs and some of our other uh, friendly social and learning activities around here at Rec Poker. So I'm excited for this. Uh, and actually, yeah, uh, I should mention, Charles was one of our qualifiers. We run these quarterly Marek Madness qualifier tournaments on the third Saturday of June, September, and December. And you can win your way in by defeating a, uh, a field of other Heads Up players. And that's open to everybody as part of our home game club. Our home game club is a fantastic way to play home games uh, with uh, good, positive, encouraging people uh, for free. It's play money, but everybody tries their best. Um, <laughs> Rob's got the rings. We've got the pins over here, the rec oh, yeah. pins. For now, did pictures. you actually win those, Jim, or are those just I for absolutely show? did. Oh, no. Oh, These nice. Are, well, I, I mean, there's there's some asterisk talk for some of my pins that, that I should declare. I don't want to go on the record just saying, like, <laughs> I won them without any. Yeah, so you already see in the chat we've got some asterisk. So, wait, uh, what, do, what do we call this? Are, we, are you three-time champion, four-time champion? Like, what, what would the people call you? Uh, ooh, what would the people call me other than uh, so, <laughs> uh so, might have left that door a little I too couldn't far get open. There with a straight face, I couldn't get there with a straight face, Rob. Um, but you, well, I'm glad you asked. So, you get one of these pins. Uh, if you win, we run 10 home games a, a week between mixed games and no limit hold'em. Uh, it's all through our home game club. You can find out more at rec.poker slash home games. And uh, if you win one of them, you can get one of these every year for okay. a few different kinds. You can win our our we, our nightly, our monthly, our mixed game club, and uh, there's a couple other ways to get in there. Um, but suffice it to say, one. I've won a few. I've won a few. I've well, that's few good. Those. I got I got the silver. That's the much coveted uh, tournament of champions, Victor. They don't they don't oh. get those away uh, too easy. Um, but I, I, as folks know, I'm just one of the awesome people on the wrecking crew here uh, a lot of people here have more pins than i do but uh they do look good on that hat don't they yeah they do that's very that's nice pretty sharp right yeah hey man um we're gonna be talking about maybe uh dueling off uh between some wreck poker 100k community some kind of competition the pins versus the rings you yeah know, we, we're happening. working on a little team competition that'll be coming up here maybe next couple months we'll kind of see i know we're going to have another meeting uh in two weeks right a week from monday yeah. to yeah. talk about it um i i expect that meeting to be a little bit rough because i think we're going to spend <laughs> about six minutes planning and 54 minutes arguing over who gets be jamming um <laughs> yeah. both communities. so um, awesome, there might be some might be yeah. some Rochambeau that takes place. <laughs> so I don't know how we're going to degen that out, but um, no, I, I'm excited about it. We talked about it with our community a little bit today. I think it's going to be a lot of fun, and um, guys will just have to wait for some details on that. But uh, it, it'll be a it'll be a good mashup of the communities because we're all trying to do the same thing here. So that's right. I love it. Well, um, folks, if uh, you're not familiar, if you're coming from uh, Rob's stream and you're not familiar with what Rec, Rec Poker is all about, just head on over to www.recpoker, uh, rec.poker and sign up for a free community account. All it takes is an email address and a smile, although both are mandatory. And um, <laughs> uh, and if you're not, and if you're one of our friends and you want to learn more about uh, Rob Gardner and 100K Studios, uh, Rob, what's the best way for them to kind of get in touch with you and find out more yeah. about what you're doing? Uh, 100kstudios.tv, and you can always DM me over at Rob Gardner Live on Twitter. All right. Well, I've got, I know we've got two matches tonight. So we've got two Grolsch here ready to go and uh, get ourselves into fighting shape. Um, Taylor is uh, our wonderful producer. And I have to shout him out because if people are watching, you're not going to know uh, what Taylor is doing. But Taylor is instrumental to Marek Madness. This is kind of his baby. He's done a fantastic job putting this all together. And I'm excited to be here on the team with him. 
uh, joining uh, this fantastic group, the, the Wrecking Crew here, making it all happen. So, um, folks, we're going to be uh, looking at two matches, like I say. That means there's at least two chances to win a prize tonight. So if you guess the the hand that is in the winner's hand at the time that what 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 a way to say that if you guess the winning hand of either of the matches, uh, not with not you don't need suits, but either one of those uh, just you know the ace king off or ace king suited or something like that. Actually, uh, uh, I think just ace king. I wouldn't even worry about suited or off suit. Some people are already getting some guesses in there. That's one way. And then the other way, uh, we like to do a favorite card draw here. So, Rob, in all the, of all the 52 cards available to you, is there one that stands out as your favorite or your least favorite? Uh, a remarkable card, and I'd like to know why. Um, well, it, I mean, it's going to sound like a cheesy answer, I think, but I'm just going to I'm going to bring it. Um, so my card is the King of Hearts, and mm. uh, that card is something I've always wanted to get a tattoo of, but I've never actually gotten around to doing it but uh it's because of my former history as a pastor so it's kind of a cool uh i guess analogy that brings the two worlds together for me uh between poker and faith so i uh, that's always been my favorite card and um one of these days i'll lose a bet and get that tattoo made <laughs> i love it i mean what it'll have to take to get it done yeah 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 that's right um cool i love that story King, is that the one with the sword is that the uh, uh i think you're thinking of like the suicide one. jack right is the oh, suicide okay. jack the maybe, one that's got the maybe. I don't know. I mean, it depends on the on the like nowadays you got so many different sets like faded That's spade true. has different pictures. And so uh, it probably depends on on who your card maker is. Yeah, that's interesting. It's like the old chess pieces that used to be modeled after rulers of that time, just like the cards would have the actual courts. I just think yeah. that's such an interesting little history. Yeah, um, it's a little fast history. OK, so the king of hearts, if the winning hand has uh, the king of hearts in it, then we're going to do a, a random die roll and uh, see who the winners are that way. And uh, Rob, you're offering folks um, a little um, a free membership here as yeah. part of the prize pool. So can, why don't you tell folks what they can win, and then we'll uh, get the first match started. Up. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna, you were nice enough to give away some uh, month uh, memberships in our stream. So we're gonna give away some tier one memberships here, and that'll get you access to all of our content, past and present, our our seminars that we do, and it will get you into our league, so you guys can compete for mm. the uh, WSOP seats. We're gonna be sending two people to the World Series to um compete in the colossus and be in a poker documentary chase the dream too uh this summer so really sick opportunity uh and there's details about that on the website so yep amazing all right well i'm excited for this so we're gonna get started here in just a second uh when folks get uh when we when we put the match up here you're gonna see michael babker at the top of your screen and chris 555 jones at the bottom of your screen uh, so get ready because we are about to get going over here so, um, Rob, as we get started, the first thing that stands out to me is we're starting nice and deep. We've got 100 big blinds, and uh, I, I know from previous matches that there's going to be lots of room to run here. So, um, when you're nice and deep like this, uh, what, what's your take, Rob? Uh, should we have a mixed strategy of limping in and open raising the small blind, or uh, do you like one or the other? Yeah, I'm I'm never folding. Um, a lot of my limping or raising is going to come down to how aggressive I think my opponent is and and kind of feeling them out. Um, what's crazy is you can have an opponent, especially in tournaments, who plays completely one way till you get heads up and then switches, like as a tournament mm. player. So I run into a lot of different situations there. Um, in a field like this, I'm probably going to play pretty straight up and start with limping some of my weaker hands and raising my stronger hands just until I get a feel for how my opponent's playing. And then I can flip flop at will at that point once I get a feel for, you know, how aggressive they're playing, or how much they're playing back at me. Yeah, I always think about balance as kind of being about defense and you only really need to worry about that against certain opponents. So if they're not making you worry about balance, then you're probably better off just exploiting them with the uh, uh, sizing and and actions like that that makes perfect sense so uh chris is it in position here with a pair he's got a fire i think right yeah i like a bigger sizing here but i i see a lot of people will kind of go to their standard sizing this hand's kind of vulnerable um and yeah we've got back doors but we don't love a lot of turn cards even here picking up a jack high flush we're not like fist pumping um, so kind of generating some max fold equity in the flop is nice. I do like the check back. 
uh, to keep the pot size manageable. And and then if he does end up with a dicey call in the river, it 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 keeps it you know at a size where he can make a pretty straightforward call. Interesting spot here because Michael's kind of right in the middle of his range. He does elect to make a value bet here. And now we'll see if he if Chris is willing to raise this. Yeah, and Michael can probably get called by, you know, one of those one pair hands on the flop that he's got beat, but he is going to be beat uh, by better sevens and of course some jacks. And there's there's that thin value from Chris with the raise. Yeah, I love this probably. raise. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, me too. Definitely getting called by some one pair hands and. Uh, and you know Chris Chris really knows his stuff. He's not a he's not afraid to uh mix it up either. I think we'll find plenty of opportunities for raises and good value bets and good sizing from Chris. Yeah. Very much. It's great. Michael is what I look like now and Chris is what I'm going to look like in about 2 years when I finish losing <laughs> all my hair. So it's like past <laughs> and present here. I'm getting both sides of the coin. It's a journey we're all on. Congratulations. Yeah. On your, yeah, on your yeah. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> I'm I'm falling more in love with hats every day. Let me tell you, <laughs> that's right. Uh, so we got a comment here from Asinine Bovine in the chat. Uh, poker pastor. So the people that won on your uh, channel get a membership into Rec Poker. That's right. Yep. Yeah, we're gonna be uh, cross pollinating as um, uh, B Jammin mentions it in there. Uh, you guys, if if you like what they're doing over there, you'll love what we're doing here, and vice versa. So uh, uh, Rob will probably let you know how to get in touch, or you can always just email me, Jim at Rec Poker. And we'll say, yeah, yeah I'm going to, I'm going to shoot membership. you, Jim, I'll shoot you the, their email addresses of the three Perfect. winners. And then, um, yeah, I mean, if you guys like hundred K studios, it'll be like hundred K studios, but organized. So, uh, <laughs> you'll probably love it even more. Um, That's awesome. I love that. Well, and if you like rec poker, uh, it's like rec poker, but resourced. So there's, there's just a lot of great stuff. Yeah. Both these yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> So Chris's favorite hand is pocket fives. He would literally okay. tell you that pocket sixes is a worse hand. That's the kind of way that he feels about pocket fives. Um, so a little disappointment for him there to only get pocket sixes. Well, you don't want to block a six five. suited and six seven suited because those are hands that, you know, people will overplay. So <laughs> blocking so the straight hands are more important. Go ahead. Sorry. No, I was going to say monotone flops like this, even in heads up, uh it's kind of hard to continue but uh rob once people are playing heads up like this and the um the ranges are so wide is that as important when we get to some of this post flop stuff yeah i mean that's what makes heads up so hard because as ranges get wider um you end up in more marginal equity situations right we were talking on stream today about you know you get ace king suited in against six seven suited yeah, one hand's way better than the other, but when the actual equities play out, it's like a 64, 36, right? So it's not that exciting or not much of a difference. So you end up with a lot of situations where your range is wide, their range is wide. It's really hard to make reads. And then on top of that, because very, very few people are studied in heads up matches, you get a wide range of player types, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it is going to be very important until you really have a good feel for your opponent to kind of continue to err towards aggression. And the good news is, even theory is very, very aggressive and heads up. Um, so yeah, like monotone pots, paired boards, situations where um, the boards are fairly static, uh, you, you're going to want to keep and continually apply pressure. Yeah, it's really, uh, with wide ranges comes lots of opportunities to fold, right? If you yeah. can just give people the right price to fold, often that's a, the, the choice they're going to make. Yeah. And even if even if they don't, fold they're going to call in spots where they should raise right mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. they don't realize as much equity as they should and they also make calling mistakes so yeah in general being aggressive is going to be played very well for you in a heads-up match um as nine bovine writes in the chat funny thing i was streaming hunting the other day and found rec poker by chance and thought wow this is a lot like 100k <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's great, man. Jim Jim that's taught awesome. me everything I know. So that's, that's a big part of it. Hilarious. Hilarious. I'm pretty sure after we were playing at the uh, same table in the uh, WSOP main event last year, you managed to continue playing for at least a whole day after I didn't. So I'm I, I know where my mind You took at. some pretty gross beats though. It wasn't like <laughs> I mean you had that I, I I don't remember exactly what the hand was, but I remember you there was one hand in particular where you uh you took a really sick beat and that's uh, that's how it goes. Hey that's poker man. Yeah. 
I don't need to tell you, folks, if you don't want to get beat bad every once in a while, take up chess. <laughs> part of it no i get beat, i get beat bad in both <laughs> I'm, just, I'm not lucky in poker and i'm not skilled in chess so it just it plays out really wild spot here they both have open-ended straight draws yeah well, i was gonna say can we see the a pretty big bet here from chris i like this bet fold equity yeah because i mean you, you don't you know you have five high uh, i would really like to see him uh follow up on this even though he's betting into the nuts um, yeah it's hard to it's gonna be hard for chris to not fire away here i think when oh good for him saved himself some chips but you saw michael go ah oh, like yeah <laughs> <laughs> i think one of um one of the things about these you know and, and michael's used to as a premium member he's used to watching chris's material a lot and so i think we kind of like project on our opponents sometimes a little shiftiness or a little uh aggression especially against some very savvy players like chris no. So Michael was just uh, setting the trap out there, but uh, Chris Chris didn't didn't spring it shut. So again, Michael's kind of got the draw equity here. This would be a really good check raise. I'd expect a lot of his ASEX to bet a little bit bigger here, so I'd want to apply some extra pressure. Hmm. Oh, Hubie Forty says, I also found Rec Poker through one of Poker Pastor's streams. There you go. I'll 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 cash up you that ten dollars later, Hubie. Thanks. <laughs> Appreciate it. Rob, you're doing great work out there. I am I'm trying. Making the making the poker world a brighter place, man. That's what we're <laughs> that's what we're all about up here. Yeah. It, we need it. I mean, just we do. Like, again, do. it's just I, yes. I so I, you've heard me Stay say this. Twitter. I have I have a lot of people muted on Twitter. So most yeah. often. I hear about Twitter drama because someone goes, did you hear blah, blah, blah? And I go, nope. And then, yeah. you know, eventually I'll I'll look at, there's certain accounts that I'll go see that I have muted, but I can pull them up and get a very quick answer. And so it's just like, <laughs> again, today, like someone was like, did you hear about blah, blah, blah? And I'm like, what? And then I go look and I'm just like, you gotta be kidding me. Like, yeah. Oh yeah. It's a, it's a mess out there. Oh my God. Well, that might slow uh, Michael down a bit, but uh, something tells it me is. Chris is going to, Straight flush here. draw. Yep. We got everything going his way. I know, Chris, it's no pocket fives, but still. A good fold there. I like that fold. Yep. Disciplined fold. And here I mean, talking again, about wide ranges. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And when you're when you're 100 big blinds deep or even 80 here now after the blinds went up, like you can find better spots. Mm -hmm. um, I always tell people it's like if you think somebody's over bluffing, you don't have to catch them the first time. You just have mm. to catch them the best time. <laughs> I like it. And people will try to bluff catch in a four big blind pot when they could just let them get away with it for a while and then catch them when they're in the 80 big blind pot and you're you're sitting there with the nuts or the second nuts. Um, I like that. That's a good way of thinking about it. I think people worry about losing or winning pots and they really should be focusing more on the size of the pots that they win and the size of the pots that they lose. And yeah. Should see a three bet here, I would think. We do. Yeah. Um, wouldn't hate a four bet here. Also, we're in position, so calling both are both options are fine. Rob, are you more likely to when it comes to ace queen suited or op suit, are you more likely to call with one and three bet the other, or do you think about it differently? I tend to I tend to three bet my offsuits and call my suiteds, which is the opposite of what theory does. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm also playing in player pools where people stack off with their top pairs. So keeping them in in pots with our straight flush type hands that can draw both ways has mm -hmm. more value. Um, if I was playing like a 109 or something, uh, then 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 I would I would go more with the theory route. Good check back here with showdown. Uh, Michael kind of has showdown too, so not a prize, surprise to see this go check, check. Um, ace highs are going to chop here a lot, and this is a three-bet pot, so this is a really, really good value bet spot, like third pot here, I think. Does elect to check, though. I'm with you, though. I think uh, there's a lot of hands that can pay him there, even yeah, in a three-bet pot, especially wide, wide like this. It, people don't like to bet fold in those spots. I, I get it. Uh, I, I've been trying to get my river bet percentage up for 18 years, and it's still stuck at 34%. So 
it's it's hard <laughs> but um just the way that hand played out do we really think he has a king x we're blocking pocket jacks you know it, you probably have the best hand there so you know target target the weaker parts of his range pocket tens and 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 whatnot yeah, the, the bet fold line is in, in recreational pools really underutilized. Uh, the bet fold and the raise fold. But I think it, it and, and you know, Chris knows what he's doing. I'm, I know he's got bet folds and raise folds in his range, but it's, I think people have trouble with the idea that they can have a value hand, but still fold. Yeah. <laughs> so they'd rather just uh, check and like know that they had the better hand or the worst hand. And right. there's something about that experience just so like knowing yeah. that doesn't necessarily equate to profit at the poker table yeah they, it's it, it's a situation where people hate to not see showdown so mm -hmm. if they if they can check call and see showdown or bet fold and not see showdown they're gonna they aim for the check call the other thing that's always important with heads up matches and commentary is these players know each other so there's mm. going to be some meta game here that you and i aren't going to partake in so we may see a situation and go well this is a very straightforward value bet or whatever but you know chris might know oh you know michael plays back at me a lot on rivers i'm gonna set a trap and check call thinking he's gonna bluff off and he's got a very specific reason for doing it that would be lost on us because we just we don't have the history in the meta so yeah always point. important especially, to think that in especially like in a community like this where uh, right they, lots yeah, of history that. yeah that's a great point who would you say who would you say you have the most history with or kind of views you as their rival in the community <laughs> everybody <laughs> i don't think anyone views me as the rival i'm just easy money i just come on come on listen to this take, guy take jim's chips take the chips they're here <laughs> fire sale um most experience it uh i mean the, the the original wrecking crew members we played in a lot of the home games back when they were just you know a lot fewer people um so we got a lot of hands against each other taylor and rob chris and uh and john um some of those ogs yeah so uh, uh it's a good question uh it's a good question rob but i i it's hard to say i really don't feel like i have a rival we give taylor the gears quite a bit we cast him in the villain role um i mean just because a huge jerk like wow uh i mean i know he can hear me but does he have I, you I orange tagged or just me <laughs> i think just you <laughs> good to know <laughs> but no we've uh taylor uh, is just one of those guys he's such a talented poker player that it's easy yeah. to make fun of him um honestly because i know i know he can take it and we give each other the gears quite a bit um, <laughs> but we've also been roommates in las vegas uh, we've played oh, nice. some of the same tournaments together yeah uh, and he's been around uh, he's been around for uh the wreck poker story uh, longer than i have so I guess if anyone was a rival, I'd say Taylor, just because he's the one that I uh, s talk oh um, the most on the podcast and and that kind of thing. So that's fair. Yeah, he says yeah, he says I've got the red tag. Taylor's giving me the red tag, which is slow, slow roll, roll whenever, whenever possible. possible. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Taylor. I would expect nothing less. <laughs> yeah, <jerk. laughs> Chris so kind of in wanna... control this match now. Yeah, Sorry, Chris has a big chip lead, so that, that helps a lot, especially uh, when a guy like Chris that knows how to use it. Um, I want to just respond here to uh, Asinine Bovine again in the chat saying, so they can talk and uh, see each other. Yeah, we're, they're playing this match on Poker Now, which is a fantastic free platform that we've used for a while in a lot of our training materials that are here at Rec Poker. It allows observers and recorders to see everyone's hands but the people at the table can only see their own hand and they can share their video and sound with each other. So it's a great social experience. It's a great learning tool. And um, it, they've been a, a big part of our learning material for a long time here. It's a free platform. Poker now. Go and check it out. It's uh, it's a fun way to play and uh, work on stuff like this as well, some training material. All right. So, yeah, you're saying Chris uh, has a big chip lead. He's got a, probably a bit of an experience edge just because he's been working on our uh, uh, membership training videos here for so long. I think Michael's going to have to pull something out to yeah. make some magic happen here. Th this is where Chris needs to pound him, like just small bets, small bets, small bets, because, you know, as you go down from 36 to 30 to 25, like the pressure really ramps up. And, I mean, Chris can literally lose, you know, 30, 40 big blinds 
and still be, you know, one hand from winning the tournament. So mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. is where you really got to start to just uh, loosen up and force your opponent to take risks um, because you're really, you, you're really in a, in the driver's seat now. Yeah. You can put them in the grinder. Yeah. And you don't have and to go big. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Death of a thousand cuts, right? I mean, you can't, yeah. uh, you can't win a poker tournament in one hand, but you can lose it. There's right. no doubt here. So they both got two pair. I mean, Chris might feel like well, Michael's got a full house now. So, oh, yeah, oh shit. <laughs> so, so full houses. No, I'm not, I'm not going to do that yeah. to you. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. When a player has three of one card and two Just, of another, I'm never getting invited back now. <laughs> hey, there's a reason we don't call it pro dot poker. Okay. Yeah. Just letting people know where we're coming from here. <laughs> you set the expectations out front. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> that's right managing expectations big part of what we do here oh that's um, funny right. so couldn't win a big pot but uh, managed to chip up a little bit there and keep the wolves at bay for uh for michael for a little bit and now he's got a hand again but it takes two doesn't it rob that's yeah um that's the real problem yeah we'll sometimes you have to take some of the dryer boards too and 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 get a little bit more trappy I see Chris is adjusting his open sizing. Rob, do you have a set size in mind as you kind of stack down as the blinds go up? Um, uh, I mean, again, I'm going to stay close to men uh, initially, and then my up sizes are going to come against uh, opponents that um, defend a lot but don't three bet a lot. Hmm. Um, you know, so if I'm in Chris's situation now and Michael's not apt to three bet then I'll start cranking my sizing up a little bit to, to apply more pressure to make it harder for him to flat. Um, mm -hmm. As you start to raise that sizing up, better players will, you know, have more incentive to three bet and they'll start to open their three bet range. Um, so again, it's just super player dependent. And Chris had a, a, a good draw on the turn there, but also that's kind of his board. So you went ahead and put out a bet there, got called by Michael. And the uh, fives are the best hand, even though you split them up. They're not technically pocket fives there, Chris. I know that breaks your heart, but just take the chips. Cry all the way to the bank. Uh-oh. I got a bad feeling for Mr. Jones here. He's definitely going to be opening this. The nice yeah, thing I... is this is probably not a very – this is not realistically going to be a hand I would expect him to defend a three bet against, especially mm -hmm. if Michael uses a larger sizing out of position. Um, it's almost more better as like a four bet rip slash folds. And I, man, if I see this sizing, like alarm bells are going off now. <laughs> you know, one thing we've noticed in the, oh my God. Oh, wow. Well, flop. Jeez. Good Lord. Um, well, right, we'll come back to my point afterwards. Uh, Michael's just checking here because there's so many, uh, opportunities for Chris to come out and. Yeah take a stab at it chris has to feel like he's got the best hand here with top and he does but he's three bet undersized three bet and he's coming mm -hmm. in with a check raise this looks so strong it's so small i mean one thing i've noticed uh, rob in these matches this month is smaller sizes out of position that i would expect and yeah. is that is that a leak or is that what's going on there well, um, it's something that you can use against, again, opponents that aren't um, adjusting. So if you're up against an opponent that isn't going to adjust your sizing, yeah, this is going to get in. Well, look at uh, Chris's reaction. Look at Chris. <laughs> he, he, he the, oh, he gives us the Benny Hill. I don't, I don't see him getting away from this. This would be an insane fold. Um, yeah. But if you can generate the same fold equity with a smaller sizing, and your opponent's not adept enough to adjust to the small sizing, then it works well. Mm -hmm. um, so if people are doing it to you a lot, they don't respect your game probably. Is no. <laughs> um, but <laughs> but uh, no, I, I mean, it's very dangerous against opponents that adjust because you're out of position. So you don't yeah. want to give your opponent a good price to play you in position. So it has to be the right situation to do it. And that's why, like, what I see Michael use that small sizing, it's like he's telling you, like, I mean... He's telling you he's got a really, really strong hand because why would he why would he do that with a weaker hand and and price you in, right? Yeah. Um, 
it has to be a pretty sick leveling game. And the problem is it's not going to level that much because is Chris ever folding suited connectors to a 2.75 big blind three bet? No, he's got implied odds to call. So it's not like you can use it in some sick reverse level. Um, so it's it's a pure exploit that that some people use at the wrong time. But hmm. And uh, Michael does get the double up. So it's pretty close to even. Crystal has a small chip lead here, but it's definitely anybody's game. That's one of the things about these heads up matches. It, uh, it can go in either direction in a heartbeat. Still would like to see uh Chris like continue to bet here. He can pick up equity on a three, five, eight, nine, seven, and queen. That's plenty of barrel ability. Um as such, he's now given Chris the opportunity to uh turn a flush draw. I like the lead from Michael. This call is kind of thin. There it is. Uh, river paired boards. When the river pairs the board, oh, those are great bluff cards, especially in heads-up mm. matches. Because you don't expect your opponent to have that card very often, but um, it, it just it, it's such a scare card. Yeah. Especially when it goes turn river in particular. Um, the runner-runner paired board works really well. So see Michael sticking with that 2.5 open size here, about 65 big blinds effective or so. With Chris shading down to two and a quarter. Um, looked like he was at two and a half at the full stack at 100 big blinds there. So expect we'll see a C bet from Chris here. This is a board that he can. I was gonna say this represent. is this is a lot of heads up poker. Um, a bet, a raise, a call, and everybody bricks the flop. So. Yeah. Who's gonna who's gonna be the person that that who wants it more? Kind of. I mean, it sounds kind of uh, cliche, <laughs> but that is a lot of heads up poker. Is is who wants it more? So it makes a lot of sense that boards like uh, one high card, two low cards are gonna be a high C bet frequency for the imposition player, and they're gonna take that down a lot. Yeah. But when players are calling so widely pre flop, do some of the same um, board texture rules apply when it comes to like? It's not like the big blind owns some of those lower run out boards as much as they used to, right? Because the other players also playing some of those garbage hands at a higher frequency. Well, what happens is, is it, yeah, it, it's not so much that as it is your value shifts, right? So now flopping bottom pair in a heads up match is like flopping mm -hmm. top pair from middle position against a big blind. Like it, it, all the value shifts up. And so now like your king highs and your queen highs rep more like a size and and so it, that shift if you're betting properly for value and then also because your value range is expanding your bluff range is expanding um kind of allows you to just polarize more naturally in spots mm. um there is still some range advantage but again for there to be range advantage it kind of you kind of have to know what your ranges your opponents are playing and again heads up matches are um you're going to see the most disparity amongst players and heads up matches of anything you're going to see. Um, mm -hmm. I, I teach people and talk to people about the small blind. This is another place, right? It's like, Oh, well, you know, if you know what range people are playing in the small blinds, they're, you know, they're fairly easy to play against, but everybody plays the small blind different. You have people that have three bet only strategies. You have people that will only call broadways. You have people that are obsessed with board coverage. There's a lot of different ways to play the small blind uh, in practicality. I'm not talking in theory, so it makes it hard because then mm -hmm. when your opponent flats the small blind, you don't know if it's a trap. You don't know if they're capped. You don't know because depending on their philosophy, it changes things a lot. And 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 so, yeah, I mean, if if we were all playing theory, would there be range advantage boards? Absolutely. But again, what percentage of people are like heavily studied and heads up uh, theory or, or GTO? It's incredibly small. Yeah, you're right. I mean, stealing a page from you, it's like, if those things come up, I'm like, it's above my pay grade. I, I can't. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, and listen, you know, especially recreational players, we only have so much time to study. And so yeah. we should be studying the high frequency spots. We should be studying the stuff that comes up all the time, the stuff where the big mistakes are made. Yeah. Um, well, this is going to be interesting. They both have uh, kind of an interesting piece of this year. Um, 
five of well, the, you can't have the five of spades. I was gonna say that would have been a five of spades would be a fun card, but <laughs> right. We we have a problem if that card gets dealt. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, look out. Uh, and and with one having ace high and one having king high, I think they both feel like they've got showdown value here. So yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if this actually goes check check. Yeah, again. Wow. That, okay. So interesting. So Chris Aaron is trying Sando's to get him off an ace and does. Well, I yeah, mean, he, I the it. five of spades is a good blocker, right? He's he's yep. blocking the the flushes and straights there. So decided to take a shot on it and got it through. Mm -hmm. So when you've got king high in a spot like that, it did is it is it does it make that kind of like a a less good candidate for a uh, a bluff because you have king high showdown value or is it still just if you can get a pair to fold if you can get ace high to fold that's still really valuable even with king high i mean whether you can get a pair of fold is definitely plays in and again gets very situational um because now you're talking you know is your opponent capable of like folding a deuce there right mm -hmm. uh, that's that's probably the most likely case and so again situationally you have to kind of make that assertion um Again, it, it gets messy because it's like, well, you know, what what kind of pocket pairs and and single pairs and two acts does my opponent have here? And you know, with the way the betting line played out, um, so I think trying to get too far too deep into that, you can kind of level yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, so it, it just comes down to like, you know, how often do I think my opponent's folding here? And if I think it's a high frequency and I've got a good blocker card, then then you know, take a stab. It was also a pot where winning that pot gave him a two to one chip lead, um, right. which now has put Michael back in that blender. So um, the situationally, not just the the cards, but uh, the stack depths, um, it was a it was an opportunity. So yeah, that matters a lot. And you yeah. need you know you need to have enough chips to absorb a bad beat too. When you get heads up like this, that's part of it, um, because Lord knows uh, even aces are going to get cracked twenty percent of the time. So you need to be yeah. able to kind of take a hit and still have a stack to fight with. So I think people don't appreciate how important that buffer is. And with these three, four out there, you are going to have a lot of ASEX that's going to get to the river that you don't beat. So yep. um, again, it's just so hard because you got to you're condensing their range each street. You're deciding what calls and what. There's so many subjective decisions, mm -hmm. um, and that's what makes the GTO discussion so hilarious for the stakes that most of us play. Is like. That's great. Glad you have theory memorized and glad you spent all that time studying it. In game, what's your opponent actually doing? <laughs> like... Right, right. No, it's totally, totally. <laughs> yeah, no, we talk about that a lot too. Um, it's good to know where to, you know, what the GTO says is the main is the textbook answer, and then you know, deviate deviating from it is yeah. really the uh, the art of it. I don't know a lot of people in my games playing GTO. Well, I, that's what I, like, you know, it's like, well, if you're up against a really, really great opponent, you need to know GTO. And I'm like, if I'm up against a really, really great opponent, I really suck at game selection. <laughs> yeah, I've got bigger problems. Yeah. Like, what am I doing? <laughs> it's not entirely true, but uh, juicy <laughs> flop here. Yeah, so, this could get a little. This check is really interesting. I don't hate it. Like, we expect him to have a lot of probes here on a, on a board this wet. So going for a check raise um, uh, functions a couple different ways, and he does do it. I like to see a little bit larger here, um, but just to, to really de incentivize some of the weaker calls. Mm -hmm. and we like saw the follow through here. We saw him check call uh, when he tripped his aces on an earlier hand, so he's definitely, you know, playing the range game with his uh, with his opponent there too. Yeah, and again, this is where the leveling war comes in. So. It's very easy for me to say, oh, you know, I'd go bigger here, but um, he might know that that 4X is going to reel Michael in in some way. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, take point. everything we're saying with a grain of salt. Good point. We got a comment here. Uh, DFS Brat in the chat says, I feel as though Michael is check calling way too much on flops. Um, yeah, I think that check call is such a natural uh, line that we kind of get used to just checking and calling out of position. Um, but I'm curious, yeah, DFS Brad, do you think they should be leading more or check raising more or check folding more? I'm always curious to find these uh, out of position lines on the flop because we have to kind of, I, I agree, we kind of have to fight that temptation to just take that check call line just because we're out of position. You kind of need your opponent to be firing at a certain frequency to uh, make that happen. Michael just wishes he could get those aces paid. 
Oh, he says, yeah, why are you breaking Once aces heart? over two pair twice in one turn? <laughs> yeah. Guy's greedy. <laughs> I just want to see two cards that look alike, man. Like, <laughs> uh, It's interesting to see some some new sizes here, too. I saw Michael opening three. Just having uh, some technical difficulties. I think we should be back now. Let's see if we can get some uh, feedback from our yeah. So our that's chat. that's really the entire secret to poker. That's that's literally the secret to poker. Um, so, <laughs> uh, so yeah, I hope you were writing that down, folks, because uh, Rob really just kind of distilled everything that um, that we needed to know. That is that is how that goes. I'm sorry. Sorry, Phil missed that. Oh, no, it sounds like we were having a little audio difficulty, but. Uh... <laughs> yeah, DFS Brad says, yeah, I got it all down. There you go. That's my that's my favorite line. <laughs> like anytime something goes wrong, I'm just like, yeah, so that, that was that was the secret. <laughs> that was beautiful. my master class. I love it. <clears throat> we are kind of uh, we have this bit over here at Rec Poker about audio cues not going well, about sort of all the difficulties that you can have. Um... <laughs> So it's very on brand to be bringing it to the Marek Madness booth. I appreciate that. Again, that authentic experience here yeah. at Rec Poker. We're not pretenders. We we know who we are. We know, uh -oh. we know what we're doing here. Oh, the trip six is a little micro bet. And I mean, King High is probably continuing. No, Michael says not happening. Uh, just too much going on there. Yeah. Once you get down to twenty five bigs, it's it's hard to make loose floats because um, even Good if you point. pick up equity, you're going to face uh, you know the SPR is just rough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. So we'll see what Chris chooses sizing wise here. Again, he's kind of uh, scaling down a little bit there. Two point one four. QB forty says I can read lips, and that was not about poker. <laughs> I think he's on to you, Rob. Well, I mean, they've had a little, they've had, they've had about two months of experience with me now. So <laughs> yeah, BJM has given me grief. He's uh, Ben used to be, we used to be giving odds every podcast episode about what the over under was going to be on audio cues. And oh, nice. Rob, I'll tell you, it was often higher than 0 0.5. That's all I'm going to say. But 0 0.5 was not, not usually the ceiling for that. And uh, he says, yeah, betting lines have been closed, but they might have to reopen if Jim keeps missing audio cues. Yeah, it's just I get too close to the computer. Smoke starts coming out the back. I'm not the guy you want. See, that's uh, that's way better. Things. We we bet on we bet on where I'm moving in 2024. That's way less exciting. So, <laughs> uh, uh, by the way, Pennsylvania minus 140 right now. If you guys are uh, um, placing bets. Sweet. Steeler country. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> More like legal online poker country, yeah. but um yep, I get it. Well, these these colors didn't choose themselves. Or, that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> all I'm gonna say about that. Well, yeah. it's gonna be it's gonna be a while, Jim. So. <laughs> <laughs> it might be. It might be. I believe in this picket guy, though. I do. I do. I, I think. <laughs> I think he is. Uh, I think he does have some potential. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, so think, oh, this a, a, yeah, I like the folds. Doesn't need to fight it out, out of Not, position. Yeah, I mean the thing is, come. like we've we've seen Michael now start to limp more and start to fold more. So when you see him firing, you got to give mm -hmm. him a little bit more credit. Like he's That's not. That's a good point. He doesn't That's come across point. like he's doing a lot of bluffing right now. So. Yep. And I don't think people credit how uh, impactful that can be to yeah. your ROI because if people don't see you bluffing they're gonna they're gonna overfold to your value bets and that's actually taking money out of your pocket like if right. you're not getting paid when you do make aggressive actions then you are not going to 
um, you're not going to win all the money that you could because people are going to fold against you too easily. Yeah, it's now so coming... hard. Because mm. when you get short, nobody wants nobody wants to bust bluffing and nobody wants to bust heads up. You know, being hyper aggressive. Um, yep. They want to say, oh, oh this... I got I got it in good, honey. You just got there <laughs> yeah, on me. You know, right, like that's right. <laughs> Well, I think this might be it. If I had to guess, here comes yeah, it's the getting in. three vet shove, and I think Michael's gonna uh, gonna take it. He's going to oblige. Oh wow, very disciplined. You had to think that I guess Dang Chris it. had just a lot of better aces. I wanted a three there, of diamonds, four tight. diamonds flop, or a jack <laughs> ten diamonds flop. Yeah, you know, yeah, one of those no straight kidding. flush draws. Wow, just for the max sweat. Wow, that was a really interesting spot there. Um, I, Rob, what do you think? It, it is Chris. Just, if he's three betting every ace, um, is ace two still a hand that you kind of have to go with there? Or yeah, you, I just think you have too much spot? equity. I, I, yeah. I think because the problem is now, like you, you're getting to the place where you don't have fold equity, right? Mm -hmm. Um, now you have to like start open jamming, like in this spot. So I, you know. You can't avoid variance. You're gonna have to get it in light That's at true. some point to win this match. So That's a great point. It's not like hero folding is is saving your entire tournament. And now basically down to six outs here on the river. And it's GG's. And there it is. Yep. Queen King suited. It's a pretty hand. It did not well, have the king of hearts. My 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 read was off. I expected Chris to rip his jacket off and start dancing around the room and screaming and fist pumping. So, um, I'm over one there. <laughs> yeah, no, he's he's remarkably composed. Uh, that Chris Jones. He also knows stranger to the winnings to the winner's circle. So, oh yeah, Chris says that's off camera, Rob. I <laughs> got uh, it. He saves that. Put the little put the little slide the little blocker in front of the camera and go have fun. <laughs> um. So I know Taylor is going to be lining up our next match. This is going to be Charles Allen versus uh, Keith Brandt. Um, in the meantime, I don't know. I'm just going to see if uh, anyone had King Queen uh, suited as one of the winning hands. Doesn't look like it. So there's still uh, two chances to win. There's, uh, oh yeah, it was A7 off. That's right. That was the actual winning hand there. Um, and I don't see it there. So... Uh, start putting your guesses in if uh, you feel like you know the hand that Charles Allen or Keith Brandt are going to win with. And uh, and then the only other way to win is if uh, we get the King of Hearts showing in one of those one of those hands. So, Rob, uh, you're at the Poker Pastor. Let's uh, talk a little bit about um, what you've been doing on the stream. You've been giving out prizes. You've been having fun. I know you used to be really uh, more involved with streaming. You took some time off. You're coming back into it now. You're a couple months in. Uh, what's that experience like? And um, I know you've had you've had quite a couple of months as well. Sort of how how is everything how's everything going right now? What are you excited about? And what are you really enjoying about the stream and everything else that's going on? Yeah, I mean it, it's it's interesting. Um, I've been both uh, streaming and back on my own dime. Uh, the combination of the two for about uh, five weeks. Um, you know, it's interesting because you get back on your own dime and and you've cleared makeup and all that stuff. And you're like, okay, I'm ready. I'm going to build some bankrolls. It's going to be awesome. And then you break even for like the next four weeks. And you, you start <laughs> questioning everything you know about life and poker. Um, but um, it, it's, it, it has been nice to like, I feel myself week over week getting more and more into a rhythm with the streaming side, getting more rhythm with this poker side. And um, I'm getting ready to take a vacation. The first uh, two weeks of May, we're going out to the East Coast. We're actually going to go through Pennsylvania and uh, North Carolina and Delaware and check out some places that we might move next year. And because of that, me and my wife are both like kind of going a million miles an hour in April. Um, we're mm. both the kind of people that like we're excited but we'll get there faster if we just work, you know, if we dig our heads in and grind, the time will go by quicker. We'll be kind of super focused and it'll fly by. So I'm actually getting ready to do, um, I'm putting up my own challenge in April to get 30 final tables in 30 days. That's Whoa, the, the 30 yeah. 30. Right. Um, now single, single table tournaments, Rob, is that your Yeah, 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 right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, they, they have to be field sizes of a hundred or more. It has to be a minimum okay. of a hundred people in the field size. Um, we were talking in stream today. I, I was trying to get some people to give me some kind of idea of what they thought the odds were. And 
we're thinking between like 33 and 50 percent chance of pulling it off we'll see i'm not going to be able to literally play all 30 days um but right. i'm going to play a good chunk of them and it should be a fun challenge um i think it's going to be it's going to push me um i'm going to have some streaks where it's like oh this is gravy i you know i had four final tables today we're cruising and then i'm going to have like four days in a row where i run bad and i don't get any final tables and i'm gonna start <laughs> feeling the sweat um but no it should be a fun time i'm gonna be streaming a ton in april uh to to come you know to partner with that and my wife's working extra shifts and stuff so it's just gonna be a really really locked in grind for 30 days and 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 see where it takes us that's awesome man uh good luck with that i know once you give yourself that kind of a target or that kind of a a, a goal once you get start start getting close to it, it can actually. Uh, we we yeah. had a couple members here. Um, Jacob Kiki uh, a couple years ago in January said he was going to win twenty two home games that year, and at the beginning of December he was at twenty one, and the month of December was like just like such a sweat for him. Every time he was in a tournament, it was like, "Is this going to be the one?" He got heads up a few times and couldn't punch the final ticket. He did end up winning it in the very last week of the year, but I think he was yeah. like starting to starting to kind of go mad a little bit by the time it uh, it came around. It's funny because I as I was I was telling the the stream about it for the first time today, and I went to look at a calendar because I hadn't really looked that close, and I'm like, April thirtieth is a Sunday. Which means like I can come into Sunday, like three final tables away and yeah. all the fields are massive. And it's like, yeah. do I just like 16 table that day and just lose my freaking mind? Or like really hoping it's just like not that. Like we just got it locked up on like the 26th that I could just coast into the month. But uh, could be a really, really sweaty April 30th, depending on how it goes. I love it. And I got to take a moment just to also shout out um our man uh, dave westerveld evil roy who was the first lifetime achievement winner here at rec poker he won oh, snap. 50, 50 home games lifetime over the course of the last few uh few years we've got a, we've got a couple members in like the low 40s that are chasing that are on his heels and then we got a couple in the 30s but i don't think people appreciate how hard it is to win that's incredible I mean, count count these pins i freaking i'm like one of the people that runs this stuff and then um, Dave Westerveld in there winning 50. And uh, I'm so proud to have him on the team and um, to award him that first lifetime achievement. So some other folks knocking on the door, but it's part of the fun that we have here at Rec Poker. I really hope that uh, people, if you're not familiar with them, give our home games a try. They're referred to as the uh, toughest play money home game series, period. And I think that that is true. People want to win. They want the pins and the bragging rights that go well with them congratulations that's a really really sick accomplishment and he is really really fortunate to have you as his coach jim i think that's really <laughs> really cool dave should, dave should be giving me lessons uh he, he knows exactly <laughs> what he's doing he knows exactly what he's doing come on so man i, I think, threw a t-ball I'm, 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 trying, I'm trying to help you here <laughs> we're, we're such a humble bunch over here at rec poker i swear <laughs> we know how to have a good time though um, and I will say, actually, I, I can't turn that down. Some of our members on the Wrecking Crew do offer coaching. We do have some very experienced uh, uh, members here on the Wrecking Crew with uh, fantastic Hounded Mob and Shark Scope listings, very experienced players, winners, know how to win, know how to win against Rex. Um, so if people that's, do want to check that out, head over. That's the key, right? That, it's different. That, that, it's you, no you just hit the nail on the head right there. Yeah. Yep. Um, so if you want to, if you want to win the kind of games that you're playing, you need to talk to people <laughs> that can that can beat those kind of games. So yeah. that's 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 what we're all about here. Hey, we play for fun, but it's more fun when you win, baby. It's just more fun when you win. There's nothing nothing that else is. to be done about it. Uh, there we got Evil Roy in the chat, our one and only Dave Westerveld. That's right, looking good, man. I'm glad you could uh, uh, be here and keep spreading that rec poker love. So I think we're going to be getting pretty close to being able to line up our next match here. This will be Charles Allen at the top of the screen when the time comes around and Keith Brandt at the bottom. If you want to find out more about Keith Brandt, um, you can go to uh, rec.poker slash crew where you can learn about all the different wrecking crew members and uh, have some have some we'll spend a little time getting to know different pages there. So I think we'll be all set here. We'll probably start getting here and we are beginning the match again we're starting with a hundred big blinds here you'll just see it on your screen in a moment and a pretty good starting hand for keith brandt ace five suit is one of my favorites 
um, and Charles is opting for the men open. And uh, I always wonder what to do here, Rob, because Ace Five's got things that make it good for calling and things that make it good for raising. Do you kind of use it for both from time to time? Yeah, um, early match, I'm probably just going to call. Um, long term, it's going to depend on how often I'm going to get my opponents off on a second barrel. If I have opponents mm -hmm. that like call first street but fold a lot of second streets, then a hand like that plays really well just because of how often we'll get to fire two streets with it. Mm -hmm. um, so I that that's kind of again situational, but I like that. I breathe don't on the pot. Enough. Yeah, it's, it's funny, isn't it? It's, it's so often the case in these. Uh, so often the case in these heads up matches. Yeah, I don't think people think enough about winning the hand on future streets. You know, yeah. the 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 later the street you can win the hand on, the more the bigger the pot. Typically, the more betting opportunities that I've got in there, the more information you have. And uh, Charles Allen probably liked his hand coming into this one, but he's gotten brutally outflopped by I, Keith. Yeah, I need to know what this guy eats for breakfast um, <laughs> immediately. <laughs> now, do you like the call or the raise here when uh, when you check? This, this is a pretty dry board, so I, I think this is I, I think a call. I I generally prefer on this mm -hmm. drive of board. Um. For me to raise, I kind of want to feel confident that my opponent is going to call me really light, you know, gut shots, two over type hands. And again, he did get a call. So again, there might be some history here where he knows he's getting that call. Um, this is a really tough spot to play um, mm. when you have quads on the river because... <laughs> <laughs> well, and Charles is, Charles is one of those players that I was talking about where he knows we're all capable of making these bluffs and being yeah. balanced in these spots and so i think he does kind of give credit for uh people getting showing up with bluffs when they when they might not right oh we've got some fun comments so chris and michael from the earlier match are both in our chat right now uh yucking it up in there so um nice to see them and congratulations chris and chris jones welcome to the finals of marek madness you'll be here next Thursday with uh, Veronica Brill and I and Taylor Moss, of course, as we uh, do the best two out of three. The winner of this match will be Did, did Veronica first. pay you to follow me up? Like, I mean, <laughs> could you go, like, from a worse face to a better face? Like, ask her, seriously. Like, was that, like, totally set up? She's like, please put me after Rob Gardner. I'm just it. <laughs> Dear she did God. request you. She requested you personally. It's amazing that you guys have that kind of rapport. We do go back like, a little bit. We we have a little history, so not bad history, but <laughs> no, she's great. Through high hands, um, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, yeah. Well, you got it, it's it's good company that we share. Uh, yeah. Rob, I'll say that. Um, yeah, Kale Cleeton and um, Ryan Laplante and so many of those fantastic. Folks from over there at the oh, Pro Poker. What, and, by the way, what are, what are we playing for in the finals? I, I didn't hear what the uh, what what are we what are, what's the prize? The pro well, aside from of course a rec poker pin, right? And all the bragging rights uh, that comes with it. Holy um, crap! I, what does this guy eat for breakfast? Uh, oh, flopping the flush. And in position, I think you're betting all the time, like range here, right? When yeah, it comes up like this. Yeah, so. yeah, for sure. And a disciplined, uh, I mean, it's hard to continue when you don't have a, a class. And oh boy, this one could get messy here too. Yeah, Michael says, uh, someone get the horseshoe out of Keith's pocket. Yeah, I think Rob would agree. Um, here's the three bet. And Charles, he's in position, so he could go either way with this, but pretty high in his range. <laughs> yeah, again, this could be meta here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, you, you got to feel pretty confident your opponent's going to do some light barrels because we are at a deep, you know, very, very deep stacked here. And yeah. you want to really start building a pot. So now Keith's got the ace of spades, so he feels like he can uh, take it, take a stab. Yeah, at and, that. and Charles having more, the king like of spades, it, it I mean, floating one is not terrible. You're in position. You can still raise turn and mm -hmm. build a pot. A lot of fun comments here in the in the Twitch chat. So I hope folks are enjoying that. 
We do, Taylor Moss streams his own play every Wednesday night in the home game here at twitch.tv slash poker. So if you're having fun with the crowd tonight, come on back every Wednesday all year round. You can find uh, Taylor sharing his thought process and um, taking you behind the curtain of how he becomes the reigning player of the year in the rec poker home games. Not only the no limit, talk about calling a shot. Last year, Taylor was disappointed with his finish in the home game club results. And so he said, next year, I'm winning the player of the year for the home game series and player of the year for the mixed game series. And then he did. He won them both. It's kind of gross. You know, <laughs> win winners win. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> That's why we can give him the gears because uh, he knows he knows what he's doing. He's got a thick he's got a thick shield of success. This, this could get spicy. Yeah, it's got to, right? I mean, there's the shove. And do you guys have a Discord server, Jim? We do. Yes, we do. In fact, if you go to rec.poker slash Discord, um, you can see the invitation there. Um, but I think Taylor might be ah yes, Taylor, producer Taylor is working on it behind the scenes. It's a it's a, a great group there too. We've also got the free forums on the rec.poker website, which is a great way to uh um a great way to get into more in-depth stuff. Uh, Discord's fantastic for instant chatting, um, but to get really deep, I find uh, the forums at Rec Poker are better. Two, three, four, five, six. Hey Rob, is that a good hand? It's it's not bad. Did you see that uh, Discord has forum functionality now? Uh, no, I, I haven't. I'm not. I'm not really that Discord savvy, to be honest. You can you. actually create forum fun. channels in Discord. I just found this out the other day. Like, like we set it up a couple weeks ago, and and I was like, wow. So yeah, I'm I'm not far behind you. Yeah, there you go. Now, how does Charles get paid here? Is his real question? Yeah, like that's saying. a tough spot. Two. You almost want to try to target like a lot of his six x and do sex because. You'd expect to know if he had a king at this point. So, mm -hmm. oh, we got uh, some more fun comments um, from Asinine Bovine here in five by five. Now, uh, well, here, this this one could get interesting with uh, top pair and middle pair. He's definitely betting this. Yeah, eight of clubs is such a nice card here. Mm, great point. You, you you can pick up so much value equity on turns and you also block a lot of things too so if you do face aggression from your opponents you, you feel a little bit better about where you're at i love that charles has second pair so he's probably not going anywhere although that's a pretty big bet relative to the pot size but charles knows it's hard to make a pair yeah, now this is where it gets really weird, right? Because mm -hmm. they're both kind of in the no man's land. And it's like, do you want to turn your hand into a bluff? Do you want to? <laughs> and then you just check it down. So I want to respond to um, one of these comments here. As nine bovine talking about uh, poker now, he says it would be great for coaching. Have all your people play against each other and give instant feedback. And yeah, we actually do that every month in our deep dive play along seminar that Chris Jones runs on the fourth Monday of every month. Nine of our premium rec poker members get together and play in God mode like this. Chris records the whole thing. And then he and Daro Carney actually get together and produce an hour long video going through all the spots from our premium members, uh, picks a few hands that they played together, run them through a solver and uh, provide some feedback uh, to our premium members based on their play in that in that session so it's a great way to learn and it's just one of the fun things we do here as uh the premium membership at rec.poker so come check us out um can we, can we just can... fire all the us pros and put dara in charge of poker <laughs> wouldn't that be great he's fantastic. literally you could solve everything every problem <laughs> poker has in less than 24 hours just nuke it all <laughs> get rid yeah. of all the cool kids and just bring dara in i i Good. Chris agrees. Dara for uh, poker president. He was sitting in your seat uh, two weeks ago, Rob. He was here for uh, week week two, week two, week three, week two. Yes, of the uh, of the uh, Marek Madness. That, round, that would so. explain the really big shoes down here. I can't fit into. It. <laughs> yeah, no, it's just you with your poker peers, Dara Carney and Veronica Brill. This, oh uh, my this god! How we do things here at Rec Poker. 
Well, at least we're getting uglier to prettier as we go. <laughs> Don't tell him I said would, that. I think you would appreciate that. I think you would appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, Chris oh, they're, says they're in your seat poker. until 5 a.m. local time. Yeah, it's true. He did. He did. We had a quite a lot. It was like a four-hour match series of matches that night, and he was here until about 5 a.m. local. I, time. I bet it does help to be on the you know the final four and the you know as you get yeah, deeper. Yeah, the... fewer fewer. That's true. <laughs> I can't imagine did... what the first round was like. Did you guys break it into multiple? Uh... We did. Yeah, we did yeah. the first round over two weeks, and then uh, each round's been its own week since then. This tournament uh, has a you, really good structure too. Yeah. Well, you can talk to talk to Taylor. He he sets all the structures in that. Um, yeah. Uh, so someone someone yeah used to know is Michael Babker there in the chat. Uh, yeah, we had a, a four four hour four plus hour match with Dara. We had another like almost four hours with Fox Wallace uh, the other day, and um, you're getting off uh, easy tonight, Rob and Veronica next week as well. The finals will be the best two out of three. So it could be two or three matches, two or three cans of Grolsch all to be. So, so you're basically saying you scheduled me for the shortest possible stream. <laughs> I mean, I didn't, I didn't say it. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I mean, there's a lot of public information. People can draw their own conclusions. Uh, I'm um, just glad to be here. <laughs> Hubie 40 says you can wear your clown shoes at the bottom. Uh, you'll be all right. There you go. If you're looking to fill those big shoes. Yeah, uh, yeah, he's mad at me. I took some of his chips today, so. <laughs> so this one uh, is of another interesting little spot here. Charles is up and down, and Keith's got top pair. And like the upsize. I like yep. the upsize a lot here. Your hand's very vulnerable. You can get called by a lot of worse hands. Especially with some Charles of the floats we've seen Charles make. Like Charles yeah, is capable point. of floating here with like a 4X. So get your value while you can get it. Ah, JB Twin Cities says, I bought Fox's book after listening to him last week. Yeah, he's uh, he's a great friend of the show and has a lot um, of insight to lend to the poker world. There's no doubt. Right on. Way to go, JB. Where's your book, Rob? Um. So funny enough... I've written two books in my life and I you won't find any of them, either of them. <laughs> <laughs> much much like I, I have written music that is online that you guys will mm. never find either. There's there's a whole mm. bunch of stuff stored away on the internet cool. that from my younger years that uh Well you're you're a passionate, talented guy. It doesn't surprise me one bit. Now what what do you do here? What do you do here as Keith? Yeah, Keith I mean again, this is just comfy. a spot. Wow, nice call. Nice call. Um, second pair, second pair, top kicker. He smelled, he smelled something. Yeah, he smelled something. Because there were two clubs on the board too, it's like his straights probably want protection before river. So when he blasts mm -hmm. off on that river, it's like, are you repping two pair? Or are you like, well, it, it's kind of a weird bet. So I really like the call. I mean, it'd have to and be almost like a straight with the club redraw or something. And it's great to see uh, we were talking about players that if they're not bluffing often enough, they can kind of become one dimensional. And now Keith, you know, he's obviously got enough of a history with Charles that he knows that Charles is capable of putting those bluffs out there and he snaps them off. Yeah, Dara's satellite stuff is gold. Mm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it sounds like it got JB into a uh, satellite tournament into the MSPT, they're playing at our sponsors, the Running Aces Hotel, Racetrack, and Casino right now. So it's going to be in some... One of the places I've wanted to get to for a long time and haven't yet. I got a lot of those, though. Oh, yeah? <laughs> sure yeah, it, it, it is a great spot. It is a great spot. We'll be doing a meetup uh, out there in August or September, Rob. Give you give you some notice, and maybe we can huh? have, have some fun. There's, non -zero, there's, there's a non-zero chance I could make it out there. For, yeah, I, we talked about this. You're out in the Toronto area, right? Yeah, just east of Toronto. How yeah. far is that from PA? Not that far. I, I drive I down say, to the like, Steelers games like every couple of years. It's about okay. six and a half hours or something like that. Not bad. Okay, so we're 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 actually we're gonna get closer potentially. So I love it. I now love I have it. the odds just moved to like minus one sixty. So <laughs> you, you killed some people's action there, but <laughs> that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Now Monkey Systems got to be thinking about it here with Ace Eight of uh, Diamonds. 
Charles is shoving ace 10. Now, yeah, Pete has the, such a I chip mean, lead. It's you can like make this call. It's just it's just an unnecessary spot. Like, the mm. thing is, you've got so much pressure on him. Of course, if, mm-hmm. if you ate what he ate for breakfast, which we still oh, don't know. Oh, no. Wow. Somebody That's tell good. me what this man That's eats good. for breakfast. <laughs> God. <laughs> Well, and that's how they roll, isn't it? Sometimes that's bad luck for Charles Allen, but Heath manages to find the eight, and that is all it took. That's all it took to send him to the final match here uh, at uh, Rec Poker for Merrec Madness next week. Um, so, uh, Rob, before we uh, say goodbye, we've got some uh, other fun comments here in the chat. Uh, Hubie 40 says Toronto to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania is about seven hours. Yeah, that's about right. Uh, Hubie, I'll be curious if you have more experience with Toronto or with Harrisburg, because I'm kind of familiar with both of those places. Maybe we might even know some people in common. You never know. Um, Three weeks of marathon matches, barely an hour for the semis. I know the time did fly by uh, tonight when you've got good company like Rob Gardner in the booth and, uh, uh, these kind of matches lined up some riveting attention. Oh, sweet. So Hubie's a, a Harrisburg native right on. Good for you. Um, I love that. I love that part of Pennsylvania and, uh, I have, I've been in the, in the region, um, for a while. It's, it's one of the cities we're going to, we're going to visit and, and take a look at. So non-zero chance that I'm Hubie's neighbor and, I'm sorry for you, Hubie. Um. <laughs> and uh, congratulations to JB Twin Cities on um, uh, winning that satellite to the first trophy event. Uh, good for you. That's going to be awesome. Congratulations. That's going to be fun. Uh, well, here we are. So that's the end of uh, round two. I'm so excited. We're going to be looking at uh, Chris Jones versus Char- uh, Sorry, versus Keith Brandt. In the Marek Madness Finals, that's on Thursday, March 30th. Come join us at 9 o'clock Eastern. I'll be joined by Veronica Brill in the chat. We're going to have a fantastic time. We're going to drink some Grolsch. We're going to cha- uh, crown a champion. And uh, we didn't actually get any winning guesses tonight. And we also did not get a hand with the King of Hearts. So I'll tell you what, Rob, uh, why don't uh, we host this podcast once a week? It's called the Rec Poker Podcast um familiar with it yeah (laughs) we 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 always we always give away a prize at the end of the show so we record every week on monday nights at 7 30 eastern and we always give away a prize at the end of the show why don't we take a couple of the memberships we were going to give away tonight and we'll give them we'll give them out on the podcast instead and we'll share uh spread some love for 100k yeah just let me know just let me know who they are and we'll uh we'll take care of them and uh again i i look forward to a lot more things that we'll get to do together over the coming years, because I think we're both doing a lot of things that are good in the industry. And I think we're going to be around for a long time and yeah. um, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and I think it's really important for poker. So I appreciate each and every one of you that are in this uh, stream and everybody that's a part of the wrecking crew. Cause um, we just, we just need it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> else. Please save the poker industry from itself. <laughs> Well, listen, you know, there's, there's lots of room for people that are making the poker world a brighter place, and it's great to be helping to shine your light and vice versa. So I look forward yeah. to uh, spending more time together. And yeah, folks, do uh, keep your ear to the ground. I think there's going to be some kind of competition between the communities here. We're still working out exactly what, but uh, it's going to be fun. Uh, DFS Brat asked, where can we find the podcast? Great question. So uh, if you search uh, Rec Poker on any of the podcast streaming services out there, or if you go to rec.poker slash podcast, uh, you can find some more details there and some links to join. We're coming up on episode 470. Congratulations. My Holy goodness. Cow. It's going to be 500 this summer. I was looking ahead a little bit. So we are looking for uh, some fun ideas for something we could do for... Um, uh, for episode number 500 that's going to be that's going to be a fun one um okay <laughs> dfs brad's going to be chatting with me on wednesday morning okay fantastic maybe they've been over to rec.poker and uh they've picked the meet with jim option um i always like to meet our new members and sort of give them a little walk through the website oh cool yeah it's a nice way to connect and um i always learn something interesting um about uh, our new members and get to kind of 
see what makes them tick, see what we can do better at rec poker and that kind of thing. So I do encourage folks to head on over rec.poker, get that free account. All it takes is an email address and a smile and check out everything that Rob's doing at 100K Studios and at Rob Gardner Live on Twitter if you want to have some fun uh, within them. And then, yeah, like I say, tune into the podcast Monday nights on YouTube at uh, 730 Eastern. We'll be giving away some prizes, including a way uh, to get some free membership at 100K and spend a little more time with Rob. What do you think? Is there anything else that we should uh, that we should be touching on here? Yeah, Pet Vet, thank you. GP award nomination next year. Wouldn't that be something, eh? Let's uh, let's show the wrecking crew some <laughs> love. I want to see some uh, some some appreciation for all the work these. I was gonna on. say if if I had my way, you guys would win it every year. But um, <laughs> you, gotta, you, you gotta know the right people. It's it's that's a that's a tough nut to crack, man. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, but yeah, hey, you never know. You never know what the future holds. Rob Gardner, you've been gracious as ever. I'm so appreciative of your time and a chance for us to get together. Um, I think on behalf of uh, everyone here in the booth, uh, Taylor Moss, Rob Gardner, and myself, um, our contestants, I want to thank them so much for the efforts that they put forward. And really, all our 16 uh, contestants this year fought valiantly. And I'm excited to see next week as uh, Chris Jones and Keith Brandt duel it off uh, for the crown thanks everyone for joining here thanks for all the wonderful support in the twitch chat and the really fun and encouraging messages and we'll just look forward to seeing you next week if not before take care thanks everybody everybody yep have a great night